Next witness. The government calls Brian McLeod. Brian McLeod, called as a witness by the government, having been duly sworn, testified as follows. You may proceed. Mr. McLeod, do you have a nickname? Yeah, Slim. How old are you, sir? 47. Where were you born? Baltimore, Maryland. How far did you go in school? I went to 12th grade and then I did a little college. Have you ever pleaded guilty to any federal crimes? Yes. What crimes? Federal crimes I pleaded guilty to were, excuse me, conspiracy to commit murder for hire and conspiracy to possess and distribute 500 grams of cocaine or more. Was anyone murdered as a result of the murder for hire conspiracy that you participated in? Yes, they were. Who was the murder victim? Lowell Fletcher. Do you know whether Fletcher had any nicknames? Lodi Mac. Where did the murder occur? In the west side of the Bronx, the vicinity of Jerome and Jerome Avenue and Mount Eden Avenue, the Mount Eden Avenue train station. Approximately what month and year? September 27, 2009. Did you participate in the murder alone or with others? I participated with others. Who else committed the murder with you? There was Jason Williams, Derek Grant, James Rosemond, and Tori Johnson. Anyone else? There was another individual by the name of Sean Williams. In this courtroom today, do you see anyone who participated with you in the murder? Yes, I do. Who do you see? I see Mr. Rosemond. Does Rosemond go by any other names? Jimmy. Any others? Jimmy Henchman. Any others? Jimmy Henchman, for guys who knew him before, probably Jimmy Ace. Could you please point to Mr. Rosemond and identify where he is sitting and an article of clothing he's wearing? He is directly in front of me with the sweater and striped shirt. First or second table? Second table. Can the record please reflect that Mr. McLeod has identified James Roseman, the defendant? Yes. Can we publish Government Exhibit 1? Who do you see in this photo? I see Jimmy. What was Roseman's role in the murder? Rosemond was the individual I went to orchestrate the whole thing. He was, I guess you could say, he authorized this whole thing. Can we publish Government Exhibit 5? Who was that? That's Derek Grant. What was Grant's role in the murder? He helped me co-plan it, and he was the trigger man. Can we go to Government Exhibit 6? Who is that? That's Jason Williams. What was Williams' role in the murder? He helped me plan it, and he was the de facto driver. Can we publish Government Exhibit 9? Do you recognize that individual? Yes. Who is that? That's me. What was your role in the murder? I planned it with others, picked the location with them, and I guess you could say I was in the logistics of the entire thing. Can we take that down? You also mentioned Rodney Johnson. I'm sorry, Tori, did you say? Yeah. Tori and Sean Williams, were they present for the murder? Yes, they were. Do you know why they were present? At the time of the murder? No, I did not know why. Were you paid for your involvement in the murder? Yes, I was. Who paid you? Tori gave me the payment. I went to see Jimmy, and he told me to see Tori, and Tori gave me the payment. What were you given as payment? I was given a kilo of cocaine to split between Derek Grant and another individual. When you say kilo, what do you mean? 1,000 grams of cocaine. Before we talk more about Jimmy and the crimes that you committed with him, let's talk a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? I grew up, I was born in Baltimore. I stayed in Baltimore City until I was about six, and then I moved to Baltimore County. 
In Baltimore, how far did you go in school? Baltimore City to the first grade. Baltimore County, I finished high school. While you were in high school, did you commit any crimes? In 12th grade, I had a little marijuana run. Sold about an ounce of marijuana senior year of high school. Were you arrested for that? No. Did you complete high school? Yes. After high school, what did you do? I enlisted in the United States Army Reserves and I went to Fort Jackson for basic training, Fort Gordon for AIT, and then my Army Reserve base was 344 General Hospital in Fort Totten, Queens. I was living with my aunt in Jamaica, Queens and going to St. John's University. While you were in the Army Reserves, did there come a time when you moved to New York City? Yes. What year, roughly? 1989. And I think you mentioned this, you were living with your aunt? Yes. After you moved to New York City, did there come a time when you started selling drugs? Yes. Roughly what year did you begin selling drugs? 89, 90. In the beginning, what kind of drugs were you selling? I was selling crack cocaine. And where were you selling crack? Midtown Manhattan, 34th. 42nd. Did there come a time when you left the Army Reserves? Yes. What caused you to leave? I acquired two arrests in 1989 in the Midtown area selling crack, and so I was kind of in a bad situation with my Army standing, and then I was given a general discharge. Let me direct your attention now to the period from roughly 1988 to 1983. During this period, 1988 to 1983, did you commit any crimes? Yes. What kind of crimes? 88, it was, I had sold some marijuana in school, and from 89 to 93, it was mostly crack. Where were you selling the crack? The crack was in Midtown, and then I sold some powder cocaine, mostly in New Jersey. And during this period, roughly 1989 to 1993, were you regularly selling drugs? Yes. Can you estimate the total amount of crack cocaine that you sold during the period from roughly 1989 to 1993? I don't know. I guess it would be drug math. I would say roughly 2 ounces, 50 grams a day, 6 or 7 days a week. That would be about 300 grams a week, 52 weeks in a year. 300 times 52, it would be 15, 6. 15, 6 times 5 is about 78,000 grams, I guess. That is roughly off my head. Can you estimate the total amount of powder cocaine that you sold during the period from 1989 to 1993? I would say I reduced that by about, take off about two years from the digit I just said. So I guess 40 to 50,000 grams, somewhere in that area. During this period from 1989 to 1993, did you make drug sales that you were not arrested or caught for? Yes. How many? Daily, except for the days I was arrested. I wasn't arrested. And during this period, 1989 to 1993, were you arrested for any drug crimes? Yes. One arrest or several? It was several. Any of those arrests result in criminal convictions for drug crimes? Yes, mostly probation. One or several convictions? It was several. With respect to your drug convictions, during the period from 1989 to 1993, did you serve any time in jail for any of those drug convictions? Small times in between court cases or having probation violation and bailing out. Small amounts of time, yes. Is it fair to say that in general for those cases, the sentences you received were probation? Yes. Did you continue selling drugs on probation? Yes. During the period from 1989 to 1993, did there come a time when you were arrested in Maryland? Yes. Roughly when did that happen? December of 1990. What happened that caused you to be arrested? I had a credit card and I used it in the mall 
and I was arrested purchasing clothes with an illegal credit card. How did you get the illegal credit card? There was a group of guys who they regularly were making, were selling and buying credit cards. I knew how to get one, so I bought one too. What was illegal about it? It wasn't mine. What happened to this case? That case, I received a year's suspended sentence and a year's probation. Let me direct your attention now to the period from 1993 up to 1996. During that period, 1993 to 1996, did you commit any crimes? Yes, I did. What kind of crimes? I sold crack mostly in the vicinity of 42nd Street, 41st Street, Midtown Manhattan. During this period, 1993 to 1996, did you meet anyone relevant to this case? Yes, Derek Grant. Did Grant have any nicknames? D. How did you and Grant meet? I was selling crack in the evening on a routine night. It was a very rainy day. I was on 41st Street and I saw an individual who was standing there. I never saw him before and he's getting very wet. And when he began to speak, I immediately recognized his accent. I said, you're from Baltimore. He denied it a little. I said, you are. He said, yeah. We were kind of just together every day after that. After meeting Grant on that occasion, did you and him commit crimes together? Yes, we sold crack in the same areas together. What was your arrangement with Grant during this period? Basically, I would get the drugs and package them, and he would sell them, and we'd split the profit. How long did you and Grant sell crack together? Off and on for about four years. During the period from 1993 to 1996, did you make drug sales that you were not arrested for? Yes. During that period, 1993 to 1996, were there any occasions when you were arrested for drug crimes? Yes, in June of 1995. Actually, I think it was before then. 1994, I was arrested, I believe, on 42nd and 41st in Broadway. That case was thrown out the next day due to lack of evidence. And then June of 95, maybe February of 95, I was arrested again in the same general location. And in June of 95, I was arrested again the same general location. So several drug arrests during that year? Yes. Did any of those arrests result in criminal convictions? The February case and the June case were combined into one case and I ended up pleading to one year. I did eight months on Rikers Island at that time. What did you plead to, do you remember? Attempted possession and attempted sale. You said you served eight months in jail? Yeah. Where did you serve? Rikers Island. Did there come a time when you were released on parole? There was no parole with the city, yeah, and that was part of the reason why I took that plea because I had a considerable amount of time then and there would be no probation and no parole, no supervision. In any of the times that you have been arrested in your life, did you ever provide a fake name to the police? With the exception of August 2004 and my federal case, I always provided a fake name. Can you give the jury examples of some of the names that you used? Frederick Jackson, Brian Connolly, Joseph King. Why did you use fake names when you were arrested? I always wanted to give myself the best chance of being released on my own recognizance, an ROR, and also give the impression to the courts that I had no record so that I would get a reduced sentence or come up as a first offender. Let me direct your attention now to 1997. Did there come a time when you were arrested again for drugs in 1997? Yes. What were... When was the arrest? September 3rd, 1997. What happened to the case? Well, Dee was incarcerated, I believe, at the time, or just wasn't around, and I took it upon myself to go out and actually sell the drugs. And the individual I had helping me out brought someone to me who later we found out was a cop. After your arrest in this case, did you plead guilty? Yes. What? Did you receive a sentence? 
I received a sentence of two to four years. And where did you serve that time? I served some of the time in Manhattan in the tombs and a very small period of time was in Rikers Island and the rest of the time was in Summit Shot Camp in upstate New York. What is the tombs? Tombs is, it's for detainees pre-trial in Manhattan. It's a jail? Yes. How far is it from this building? It's walking distance. From your, following your drug arrest in 1997, when did you arrive at the tombs? You're brought immediately kind of to their holding area, but I guess I would be in the housing unit probably two days later. And how long were you at the tombs? From September till about, I think, April. September of what year? 97 to April of 98. While you were at the tombs, did you meet anyone relevant to this case? Yes. Who did you meet? I met Mr. Roseman. Could we publish Government Exhibit 1? Can you tell us about how you first met Roseman? He and I were in the same housing unit, and for the most part, I was new there, and I'm observing people, and he's a loner and carries himself with respect. And one day I had to go to court. Back then I actually had hair, and so I asked him could I hold his pick, and he said, sure. Anytime you need it, just come and get it. And from that point on, we kind of, I kind of sat at the table where he sat at by himself, and we struck up a conversation. We developed a friendship from there. When you say a pick, what do you mean? A hair comb, pick for your hair. How would you describe your relationship with Rosemond while you and him were housed together at the tombs? It was a decent relationship, very intelligent, articulate, and I enjoyed talking to him. He's a great chess player and we're around each other every day. What, if anything, did Rosemond tell you at the tombs about what he did for a living? He told me that he was a producer and he had his own company, his own management company. I heard the name and some things associated with him, but I had never physically talked to him or met him until I was in the tombs. The tombs, did Roseman tell you whether he had any nicknames? Mentioned his name was Jimmy Henchman. When you and Roseman were at the tombs, was anyone else relevant to this case at the tombs? Later on, while we were at the tombs, Derek Grant came to the tombs as well. Could we publish Government Exhibit 5? Remind us, did you know Grant before you were at the tombs? Yes. And did you know Grant? I knew Grant from meeting him in Midtown Manhattan. Did you socialize with Roseman and Grant at the tombs? Yes. Did the three of you socialize together? Yes. What kinds of things did you guys do together? Played chess, talked, watched TV, we ate together. Did you observe Grant interact with Roseman? Yes. How would you describe their relationship? Similar to mine, friendly, they conversed, they got along. Did you meet anyone else at the tombs? Yes. Who? Jonathan Brown. Could we publish Government Exhibit 16? Who is that? Jonathan Brown. Did Jonathan Brown know Rosemond? He, like me, he probably knew of him or knew some of the same people, but he had a personal relationship with him at the tombs. At the tombs, did you observe Jonathan Brown interact with Rosemond? Yes. How would you describe Brown's relationship with Rosemond? It was a good relationship. While you were in jail with Roseman, did you make any plans with him to see him at the jail? Yes, he told me to make sure I stopped past the studio when I got out, and then if I was serious about doing something as far as music was concerned, that if something opened up, he would make sure I was involved in it if he had the opportunity. When were you released from the tombs? I left the tombs in, I believe, April, maybe May of 1998 to go upstate to finish the rest of my sentence. This seems like a good place to stop, so I can talk to you about the schedule. Members of the jury, I know I told you previously that if we weren't finished by the end of this week, we would not sit next Monday and Tuesday. 
Would sitting next Monday, if that turns out to be useful, be a problem for anybody in light of the fact that I told you we wouldn't sit Monday? It would be juror number seven indicating. All right. Thank you, folks. See you tomorrow. The witness can leave the room.